the champion chase. It comes up next. Sizing Europe is tired, but he's got to hang on as they race up towards the line. Sizing Europe is going to win it. He's done it at Cheltenham, he's done it at Aintree, and he's doing it at Pontchartrain in all its glory. It's a comfortable enough win in the end for the mighty Sprinter Sackers. Well, I'll tell you what, these are special pictures because these are two previous champions. We're looking at Claire on Davies here. We have Sprinter Sackler as well. But Claire on Davies, do you know what? He's 28 years old. This horse is a mere chicken, Sprinter Sacra. He's just 11. But what champions they were. And Sprinter Sacra, well, he's on his uh, retirement rounds now. He's going to go off to own a, uh, Caroline Moulds and spend his retirement there. Winner of nine grade ones, two Queen Mother chases. And uh, this race here is an eight-year-old. But look at the young boy behind him. 28 years old, Claron Davis. He spends his retirement at Chris Jones's farm near Dunshocklin, and uh, he won today's feature in 1996 and 97, both times conceding lumps of weight, and he won a Queen Mother on top of that and an Arkle too. And everybody around the parade ring really enjoyed it. Oh yes, the Vice Sports Champion Chase. This is one of the races that really captures the imagination of jump followers. Two miles, uh, fences and speed, and it's all about charisma and class. And this race would be a wonderful race, great spectacle to watch. The Vice Sports Champion Chase. But first, let's look at the last ten years. We've had four winning uh, favourites. Of course, last year won by God's Own, who was a, a nine to one shot. Felix Junger, five to one. The mighty size of Europe. He was a jewel winner of the race. And we've just seen Sprint to Sacker. What a beautiful horse. He is. He was 9-1 to one on favour when he won here in 2013. Brought the house down on, on that occasion. Big Zeb. Remember that race? That was a real exciting renewal of the Boyle Sports Champion Chase in 2011. Going back to Mastermind, the Twist Magic and Mansoni. It's always a race that lives up to the highest accolade. And this year's renewal, we have eight runners for the half past five. The big race on the on day one here at Punchestown. Look at the prize money. €250,000 in total prize money. You know everyone my shoulder you can get 11 to 10 on the so 9 to 1 winner last year but on the so of course who's won his last three races the three grade ones this season can he make it four on the bounce he's won his 18 from 23 starts and almost 950,000 euro in prize money number one is his stable companion Bally Casey the Mount of Paul Town and two Fox Norton Robbie Power the entry winner touched off in the Queen Mother three God's Own Adrian Heskin four Railsmore Jack Kennedy five Rock the World David Mullins, six Sir Valentino is Paddy Brennan. Number seven for the Boy Sports Champion is the game changer, Brian Cooper. And last but by no means least is the horse that really is the coil spring on the so he was a brilliant winner, Tom Lee at Cheltenham. Pontus loved this horse. And quite rightly so, because if you want the pure distillation of what jump racing should be, just step back and savour this incredible electric spring heel sight, which is under so charging around from the front. He almost he doesn't jump his fences, he inhales them. It's just a beautiful sight and three times this season we've seen him grade ones, and he's just eaten them up, particularly good at Cheltenham. Dropping in trip here, it's a home game. He's had time to recover, his stable are flying and of course he loves it here at Punchestown never been beaten in three goes but look what lies in wait some real class horses big test today Leon Blanche Bile Sports odds against having been odds on overnight yeah and look I think um, probably bookmakers wanted to just take him on a little bit but I suppose what Thomas just said there he skipped Aintree he was so ultra impressive winning the Ryanair chase at the festival he's stepping back to two miles but he's won over two miles on numerous occasions Fox Norton to me the money is coming for him four to one last night now nine to four on track so the, the money is speaking in favour of Fox Norton yeah well I think a lot of people were a little bit worried about good ground for Underso is he as good over two miles on good ground as he would have been if it was soft ground if it was soft ground Brian he would have been a very short price he would definitely in my mind around eight to eleven four to six if the ground was soft here for two miles I still think he's the one they have to beat God's own I've no doubt he's a better horse going right handed as we saw here 12 months ago when he won the race he's a 7-1 chance rocked the world he was a winner of the last race at the Cheltenham Festival maybe he could squeak into a place and Bally Casey has won a couple of grade twos this year but it's all about Underso the O'Connell family the scenes of celebration when he won the Ryanair at Cheltenham was something that I'll never forget he's a marvellous horse he really puts his heart on his sleeve he, he's there to be shot at he goes from the front 
front. He doesn't sit in and look for a bit of cover. He goes from the front and it's catch me if you can. And I don't think they'll catch him here today, Brian. I think we'll be presenting the trophy to Willie Mullins, Ruby Walsh and the O'Connell family at around about 25 to 6. Talk to me about the Goffs Land Rover momentarily. Rapid escape and also early doors. Two horses that come into the race with big reputations. Well, it's a one-horse book. If you believe where the money's going, it's all for Joseph O'Brien and Patrick Mullins. And it's all for early doors. He's a soldier of fortune. He won his first contest by nine lengths, but it was an entirely different ground situation. It was heavy ground that day. He's coming here on much better ground, but he's now flip-flopped. He's gone favourite at 15 to 8. We don't see much support for Rapid Escape. He's been pushed out to 2 to 1, 9 to 4. It's all for Joseph and Patrick Mullins. And remember, Patrick needs to catch Jamie Codd. He's, of course, three behind in the amateur title. It's all happening here at Punchestown. Even money under so. 5 to 2, Fox Norton. It's all hotting up, isn't it? Under so, he's a marvellous horse. It's all about him. Yet, yeah, he's 11 to 10. Davy Russell has come to join us for the race. Under so, I loved him at Cheltenham. You know, he's back in trip here, but uh, does anything beat him today? I, I, I'd go as far as saying this is the best I've ever seen Under so was in, was in Cheltenham over, over the extended trip. Um, I think he's jumping. He definitely jumped the best I've ever seen him. Um, I suppose the only worry you'd have here is going back right handed and back to two miles. I suppose whether he can show to his strengths to go that really good gallop and, and jump as well as he did in Cheltenham um, is the only question. Like, it's a very competitive race. Like, we can look at that race, that race from Cheltenham now. I mean, he beat sub lieutenant. Um, it's, a, it's a longer trip. What, 2 5, isn't it? 2 5, like, yeah. Something like that. I think coming back actually is in his advantage. Yeah, I'm not so sure. I just think that that he he was just very keen with Ruby, and I think he raced an awful lot better he when he was keen. Well, he jumped an awful lot better. I've never what he done over the last two fences. I haven't seen him do before. He's usually very good and accurate, but to stand back off the way the way he stood back off that, and again, absolutely stands back off the last like like I never see him do before. He usually gets in and pops and jumps up in the air a little bit like he did in Sandown last year, but. Um, He's yeah, I think I think I agree with you, Davy. I think it's because he was in his comfort zone. True, yeah. and he wasn't out of it. Yeah, when you saw him at Sandown. He made a couple of mistakes with Ruby uh, when he won the two mile chase there because he was just on top of his head a bit. He's not as good when he's just gone a mile an hour quicker than his legs can carry him. Yeah, it just he was keen that day, and I think it suited him. Ruby bringing him back, and look again, it was a master class from Ruby on the day. But you know, he's, he's meeting Fox Norton. Um, he's meeting a, handy, a two mile handicap winner in in Rock the World, who's gone up to one fifty odd. Um, you know, it's a competitive race, and I, I think tell really you what, Tom George, he, he he's brought brought over God's own. Now he surprised Vertour in this race a year ago. He's with Tracy. He certainly is. We're getting a bit cold here. I think it's starting to snow again. Tom, yeah, you were a happy man last year when this fellow won. And, of course, you brought two over this year with uh, Sir Valentino as well. But um, he finished fifth last time behind behind Fox Norton Aintree, God's own. Yeah, he probably didn't run quite to his form last time. He's been a very consistent horse for us, and he loves it here. So it was the obvious place to come back to. He obviously does love it here and he looks absolutely super. But Sir Valentino, third last time then, of course, in the champion chase, he's not without his chance. Yeah, no, he's been a revelation this season. He's kept on improving and he's definitely earned his place in the lineup as well. And he's in good form and he's had a bit of a break in the middle of winter, so he's fairly fresh still. Yeah, they both travel over okay? Yeah, they had a good journey over here and they've had a couple of nice days cantering here, so they seem quite happy about life. Happy with the conditions, apart from the weather, of course. Yeah, it's cold, all right, <laughs> but they're the good ground is what they both like. So let's just hope everything's in their favour. Well, the very best of luck. Go get warm. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Our best of luck to Tom. This is Bally Casey, the first we're going to look at, uh, one of Willie's, and he is the Mount of Paul Towner. Now, he's in terrific order at the moment. Uh, I thought he won really well uh, at Gorham Park back in February, and then at Fairy House, he was always on top. But uh, in this company, maybe better at two and a half miles. Fox Norton, Davy. Yeah, number two, Fox Norton, a winner over just shy of uh, two and a half in entry the last day, runner-up in the champion chase uh, in Cheltenham this year. Uh, live player, uh, the favourite's biggest, biggest threat, I think. God's own, you heard Tom George talk about him. Uh, he's won around here, likes the place. His runs of late would leave him a little bit short of his best, but uh, maybe he'd produce it here today. Real Moore is the next we have a look at, number four. Now, he's a 12-year-old these days, I'm afraid. His form and his ratings uh, would leave him with plenty to do, but we must remember him winning the Powers Girl Cup, what, uh, as an eight-year-old? And, uh, my goodness, he was a good horse then. A uh, th- hundred to one he is today. Yeah, number five is um, Rock the World uh, Fe- Children Festival winner for uh, Jessica Harrington and Robbie Power. Uh, the in tremendous form, both flat and national hunt. And, you know, coming out of handicap form, could be maybe one to run into the place money. 
So Valentino's the next we look at another runner from Tom George's. Tom just spoke to Tracy and Phil Jin and him. A good run behind Special Tiara in the Champion Chase and a good run behind him again uh, before that. But just leaves a little bit short maybe to uh, topple the main contender. The game changer, number seven, is a uh, horse. He's going to love the trip. He, he would like the ground as well, but he's got no chance on form. He actually ran in the Irish National. He had no chance in that at all. He wouldn't have got it in a month of Sundays, the trip. But back over two, he's got the trip, but uh, he ain't good enough. Uh, number eight, the favourite. He's going for a four in a row here um, today on the Sioux, I suppose. You know, he, he's the one that, that they all have to beat. Uh, dropping back to two miles, but a prol prolific winner over two so far in his career. We can join Andy at the start. Andy? Yeah, runners have just arrived at the start. They're here at the, which will be the last fence. It'll only be jumped once. And uh, you can see that's the game changer and uh, Ray Moore in front of you. So all have arrived down. Interestingly, the one who came down early and didn't take part in the parade was the one getting its girth tightened there, Fox Norton, Robbie Power. You can see he wears a hood, which is a calming device that keeps the wind and the noise out of their ears. And uh, he didn't partake in the parade, which uh, you can request with the stewards if you have a horse who's a bit active. So he didn't partake, came down quite keen, but he seems settled now that he's gotten down here. Uh, a lot of these two-mile chasers can be keen horses, and actually nearly every one of these came down taking some bit of a pull or a tug. And the one who probably most likely will make the running is uh, on the so he did put in a, a brilliant bold display of jumping out in front in the Ryanair chase and uh, Ruby Walsh will be hoping he'll do something similar today you can just see him getting his girth tightened now others that may line up handy are uh, God's Own you just see Gong Pai passing in front of you there and Rock the World another Cheltenham Festival winner so riders starting to take formation looks as if the likes of the game changer and Rail Moore will be ones to drop out Yeah, I'd want this more, so I'm... What a race ahead of us, this uh, Boyle Sports Champion Chase, and uh, worth a lot of money, 250000 to be spread about, 150 to the winner, and should that be under so, well, you know what that means, it puts uh, Willie within... What, 170,000 of Gordon Elliott. Puppy Power can do no wrong. He's on Fox Norton. What a terrific season for him and for the Potsies. This is what it's all about. Steeple chasing at speed and uh, chillier than we'd have liked, but really, really competitive and rocked the world there. And David Mullins, what an interesting runner he is, the grand annual winner. So, it's a great start for the crowd under the so is our favourite. Exciting race this, Davy. Yeah, and it's a brilliant start for the crowd. You're, the crowd, it's, it's as close as you can get to it. These, like, these are, 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 are speedsters now. They're going to they're gonna fairly rock and roll down across in front of the stands there and down to the first to be helper skelter. Yeah, it's a good it's a good fence. It's a good start for the jockeys as well too. The first fence is slightly uphill and it's away from you. It's a good run to it. And it is, and usually these are nice and keen and you actually don't have to go that far to the start, if you know what I mean. It is nice and close to the parade ring and you know you can keep a lid on, on, on your horses, especially it's the two miners like, you know, but you can see the massive crowd down there. It's it's really exciting to be honest. Brian, what are the punters saying about it? Oh, it's a great a spectacle. The even money is quickly disappearing now. Best price along the rails is 10 to 9 on favourite on the so 10 to 11, depending where you shop around, but the evens is gone. 5 to 2, Fox Norton, Tom, 7 to 1 bar. Yes, the market showing up. Roast respect both for under so and Fox Norton. Notably weak, last year's winner, God's Own. Money at huge prices. Bally Casey, 33 to 1 overnight. Tony, this will be a spectacle. Off and running, 11 fences ahead of them. Rock the world, the first to go on. On the so, close up behind them. And they're followed by last year's winner, God's own. Fox Norton in fourth and then the Grey Belly Casey followed by Sir Valentino and the Game Changer alongside him his stable companion Ray Moore as they climb to the first fence. And on the so, right of the picture alongside is Rock the World. Just behind him is God's own. Then the red cap of Robbie Power and Fox Trot Tank. As he jumped this one now and it is Rock the World who leads, followed in second place by Andeso. Then on the inside in third is God's Own. They're followed by Fox Norton, and behind Fox Norton comes uh, Bally Casey. As they go to the fence at the top of the hill, fence number two, Rock the World. Andeso in second. Fox Norton is next with God's Own. Behind these is Bally Casey. Then Sir Valentino, Rafe Moore, and bringing up the rear is the game changer. As they make their way down towards fence number three. 
and Rock the World and David Mullins leading on the so Ruby Walsh close in second about three lengths back to God's Own in third Fox Norton is in fourth and behind Fox Norton is Bally Casey then comes Sir Valentino followed by Ray Moore and the Game Changer fence number three Rock the World and on the so together they're followed by God's Own, then Fox Norton, Bally Casey is next, and then Sir Valentino, Ralph Moore is next, and back at the tail of the field is the Game Changer. This is the fourth. Rock the World and on the so together, followed by God's Own, and then comes Fox Norton, then a gap of three or four lengths to Bally Casey, followed by Sir Valentino, and the Gordon Elliott pair, Ralph Moore and the Game Changer, bring up the rear as they face up to the first of the three fences down the back straight. Rock the World, and the so on his outside. They're about four lengths in front of Fox Norton as they take this one now. The first in the back straight. And the so leads into it from Rock the World in second and they're followed in third place by God's Own and then comes uh, Fox Norton. Behind Fox Norton there's a gap to uh, Sir Valentino. Ray Moore is out of the race there as they clear that fence. And the so upsides Rock the World. They're followed by Fox Norton on the right the green and yellow colours, red cap, and then behind these is God's Own. As they come to the next fence now, the last in the back straight, on the so, the leader, followed by Rock the World, Fox Norton's in third, then God's Own. They're followed by Bally Casey, and behind Bally Casey comes Sir Valentino, and a long way behind him is the game changer as they leave the back straight behind them and turn to face the fourth last fence in the Boyle Sports Champion Chase. On the so, the favourite in front from Rock the World. Fox Norton's in third. Then comes God's Own. Sir Valentino and Bally Casey are next. This will be four out. On the so has the lead from Rock the World. Still close in second. They're followed by Fox Norton. On the so, over from Rock the World. And then comes Fox Norton, then Bally Casey. And they're followed by Sir Valentino as they race down now towards the third last. And the so, Fox Norton in the green, yellow, red cap. Left is Rock the World. Bally Casey, the grey. In behind them is God's Own as they clear that fence. And the so is the leader. Fox Norton about to come under pressure. Rock the World still banged there. And Bally Casey not far behind them. And they're followed by God's Own as they swing in. Two fences left to jump in the big one of the day and it's on the so out in front rock the world right of the picture is fox norton and they're followed by god's own who's uh, coming back and then bally casey at the second last and the so is over from fox norton rock the world god's own and bally casey as he raced towards the final fence on the so fox norton putting it up to him on the near side god's own just behind him and then rock the world at the last on the so the leader is over in front from fox norton in second as they race down into the closing stages and Fox Norton has come there under Robbie Power to head the favourite and racing to the line. Fox Norton, another big one for Robbie Power and the Pots as Fox Norton wins on the so a second. Third is last year's winner, God's Own, clear of Rock the World and Bally Casey. Sir Valentino, the only other finisher. But that was an exciting race. Fox Norton gets the better of on the so. Ted and Robert, what do you think, Ted? Yeah, uh, look, I, I think it was a marvellous race. Uh, you know, it, it was always going to be between the two of them. Poppy missed the third last. Uh, David Mullins arrived on there looking like he was going to threat, but to be fair, Colin Teaser At that stage, you think Ruby might have been going to win, would you? Yeah, yeah look, uh, no one Ruby now. He was hanging on to very right. little. Ruby was squeezing there. He, he, changed, he changed his hands after he jumped the third last. There yeah. wasn't a whole lot in the tank. No. And this horse on the outside uh, gets home well over two and a half. Now, Undesu lost nothing much in the field no. except he lost the race. Jumped, got under the second last little bit puppy rise on his outside here I but he's more if you, if you watch Adrian Heskin on the inside I think it might have been a small bit small bit That's unlucky one, yeah. yeah he really just dived at the landed in the middle of the last but like this horse on the outside was some boy by the pots and Colin Tizard like really geez, he's done wonders with all these horses all year he's a marvellous trainer and puppy then brilliant brilliant um, uh, to, to, to get together with them it was a great ride by Puppy he was the first off the bridle Ruby was dictating in front and he just stayed it out that bit better he did indeed found that bit more from the back of the last but last year I just remember uh, God's Own as a novice watch God's Own the inside here yeah but he gave Undersu oh. plenty to do in a few races as well too. oh god he did you know Undersu is a very good horse and I'd love to own them uh, but he's a little bit vulnerable when the ground is good he just can't do away with horses as much as you'd like him to do That's he's a great right. horse he's, a, he's, a, he's been great for the O'Connells but it's Fox Norton's day today it's Jesse Harrington's month whether it's the flat at Navin whether it's Cheltenham Liverpool you name it it's Jesse 
Fox Norton, of course. Oh, sorry, it's, uh, it's, uh, the, the it's, tizzards, it's it's the Tizards there, but uh, it get mixed up there with the, uh, the colours. The colours, uh, but uh, it's Puppies Month, I should say. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> been on them all. Yeah, yeah. Puppies Ro- Month is right. Robbie Power from Cheltenham to Aintree to Irish Grand National to Punchestown. Another grade one for Robert Puppy Power, of course. And this horse trained by Neil Mulholland, as you said, Davy Russell, and purchased early part of the season and transferred to Colin Tizard. Yeah, and fair play to the Potts. They're marvellous people for National Hunt Racing. They love their racing, and I'm sure Anne is at home watching on telly, and Alan, he'll, they, they love their, their National Hunt Racing, and they're great supporters of Irish Irish racing, so, you know, they must be applauded. And yeah, Robert, I'm going to interrupt you for a minute, Ted and Robert, because Robert Hall has got the winning trainer, Colin Tizard. Winning trainer, Colin Tizard. Welcome to Punchestown. What a day, what a performance. Yeah, I was... He's just become a very good horse, hasn't he? But to come over here, you know, we thought we'd come in here off of Cheltenham and Aintree, and you think, oh, I hope we aren't going one step too far. And he does this. It's a fantastic feeling. How exciting was it? Oh, absolutely. I just, mean, under so, you know, seeing them come down to the last. Yes. He quickened by him, didn't he? And stayed on lovely. He's, you know, we, someone said to me just a minute ago, what, what trip now? We don't know, do we? He's, he can stay three and he can do it over two. So um, it's just lovely to have that type of horse in the yard. Robbie gets on well with him. Yeah, he's <laughs> a cracking job, doesn't he? He's unbeaten on him, so can't be any better. But uh, it's down to the horse, really, and he's, he has now become a very good horse. And uh, we're just chuffed to have him in our yard. And he's a young horse, too. Yeah, he's only seven, isn't he? He's um, just getting going. You know, when he came on the market, you know, we thought, goodness me, not many like this come on the market. And uh, luckily we had, we had Alan and Alan ready with the money to buy him. Well done, you. And what a season. Oh, this has topped it up, hasn't it, again? It's, uh, we had a quiet spell in February and first half of March. And it was quiet. Quite well, painful. <laughs> we love you coming and well done, Colin. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, real good performance from Fox Norton, of course. He's uh, by Lando. Real good pedal mayor. Yeah. Real good pedigree, but as Colin Tizard alluded to, not many like this come on the market. And Potts had had family had the money to buy him. Yeah, yeah but, but I mean they bought it. Which yeah, is exactly. I mean lots of fellas have the money. They don't all buy him. Uh, he's been a great boy. And what a month for Puppy. I got him. Jesse carried away a bit there winners ago. But what a month for Puppy. I mean everything that you could think of go right from English National or the Irish National, the Gold Cup, leading rider at Liverpool. You know, and it. You know better than I did. Puppy was nearly on the floor, finished with that eye. With, with his eye. And yeah. Look, I tell you, the cre- credit has to go out to Puppy because he was not giving up and he very easily could have. He didn't have... He wasn't riding these horses when he had his eye injury. Do you know what I mean? He was coming back for what you'd call maybe just running the mill horses. And he came back, he got himself sorted out and he got on all these really good horses and that's the trial of a man, I think, you know. And a trial of a good rider. He was always a good rider. He was a brilliant rider. A great man down over an obstacle. And, you know, his father would be proud of him. Captain Con Power, as you say, he was always a good rider, but you can't come without the ammunition Look, underneath. It's the same. It's the no. same as anything. It's a hoo Yeah. yeah. Any and it proved it this year, yeah. Robbie Paul. Once yeah. he got the opportunities, he put the ball in the net every day. And the same with the trainers. I mean, Colin Tizard there this year, he's got top... You could say other than Nicky Henderson and Paul Nichols who are in front of him on the list, but quality-wise, he's got all the quality horses. Just hit while we have Davy Russell with us, Davy. Talk to us tomorrow. You're riding presenting Percy in the big grade one, the novice hurdle. Ah, yeah, looking forward to his gorgeous horse, but he's got an awful lot to do. To, to do really, he has to step up. Look on ratings, he's the best. He's the best horse in the race, but he hasn't ran to that rating that he has. Do you know what I mean? He hasn't been proven at but that rating. But you weren't confident going to Cheltenham when he did the business. Yeah, he did. No, jeez, I'm not complaining at all. I think he's a marvellous horse, and we'll know tomorrow. How, how good he what really do you is think? I, I'm mad about him I don't know you know it all depends on the other two Pain Hill Monalee Monalee I think got very excited before Cheltenham and got on seat of his rider and I'd say he could be the danger horse Pain Hill uh, once he puts his jumping together he's a very good horse um Look, um, uh, Davy, how much did you get out of him today? He won here not to 116 oh, in a man, yeah. Davy, 116 <laughs> in a handicap. I, I, I wouldn't He's have 160. Do you see that package of chung? Yeah, see, see, that, see that package of chung? I'll tell you, when, 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 Ruby, when I beat Ruby here in the, in the championship, I, I nearly went away and backed all his horses because I knew they wouldn't win. <laughs> 
<laughs> the worst. Oh, Jesus, Captain. One five nine. If we had the water for Cheltenham free, you wouldn't give us any confidence. But that horse did the business in Cheltenham. We just don't know how good he is. Yeah, I know. You, you know, he's trained by a master. He's a mighty man up there in Galway and Pat Kelly. He's very, very, very good trainer, and he's owned by a brilliant bunch of people. So it's all going to happen. Because you're, riding, you're riding Jetstream Jack as well. Jet Weight stream. wise, what's the story in that with him? Ah, uh, ten nine. He's in there. We, we thought earlier on the year he'd win a nice race, and he hasn't. He's been disappointing. Whether tomorrow. How do you do weight wise? That now ten nine. Oh, you do it comfortable enough? I do not miss sleep, Brian. Right? You your sleep. Yeah, I won't be. I, 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 I might be a bit bitey in the morning, all right, but I'll be all right. Yeah. No, my weight's good. Working hard, working hard down the aisle there, uh, uh, calving cows and things like that, you know. Free range cows we have down there. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> of course. It's all happening here at uh, Punch's Town, and there are the scenes. Uh, Alan Potts and Robbie Power. Robert Hall, come in and join us. Were you impressed with that? Yeah, wasn't I? Do you know what I mean? I tell you what, I just thought that under so, I, he, he jumped very high at some of his fences. I don't think he liked the ground at all. I know, he, I agree with you. And he does that a little bit, Robert. He done it in Sandown last he, year, if you yeah. remember, and it was a slight worry before he was, the race. He was uncomfortable. There were doubts all the way, weren't there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. In the, in the Brian, Brian thought he was a certainty turning in. We, we were kind of just maybe questioning his, his, his in running. But, but his but in but running. I, I like, there was lots of confidence in the ring, but a lot of the judges this morning had yeah, taken sure, the 4 you, to 1, you, 72 you, you, about Fox. You concentrate Northern. on the book, he's too much. Do you know, you, if you sat down and thought about it enough, really, is it that simple? Well, you want to keep it as simple as you as you can. Like you, you're always going prices and who's back in this and who's back in that. To me, that's a lot of rubbish and complete rubbish. Like Colin Tizard, I think they should be needing money to pay. Her, to be honest, myself, um, did, there wasn't much between them and farm. And you get back to um, to Henry de Bramage's horse. He was the line of farm, and Fox Norton hammered him, and he ran up behind on the zoo in in Chelsea. Them, so I touch the beauty. It's a game of opinions, David Russell. Yeah, and everybody has one. And that's the way this it should be. I love the ground. I mean, the son of Lando, I remember Lando winning the, the Japan Cup on concrete ground, you know. And he has a pedigree, too. His third dumb yeah, is Gadisha, yeah. who won the Oaks in the 1000 Guineas. Interesting pedigree. But he looks a steeplechaser, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah and of and course. He yeah, and the board is a youngster by Neil Mulholland. He sold him. But Ted Walsh, you know, he was a shrewd trainer as well, Neil Mulholland. Knows the time of day. I think most fellas who train are pretty good. You know, I, think, I think there's very few fellas training horses who, are, who don't know the time of day. Yeah, well, we're, now we've got to go to the man that knows where the winning post is, Robert Power. Yeah, thank you very much, Brian. I'm, I'm just going to rub this man because, I mean, he's the luck that you're having, and I mean, and you're riding out of your skin as well. It's just been the most amazing season, and now this, it's fantastic. Yeah, no, it's been fantastic. Um, I suppose I better thank Jesse. She let me off Rock the World to ride this lad, so... First of all, thanks very much to her for that. But uh, he's, he's a proper grade one horse, you know, and two miles nowadays is too sharp for him, you know, and he'd be great riding the Ryanair next year, you know, something like that. He, he got two and a half an inch really well, and he was just flat to the boards the whole way, and I was just hoping he'd pick up for me in the straight, and he did. Yeah, there was a point there where I was looking at, oh, no, he's not, he's not going to do it. And then you got after him, and he answered every question. Yeah, he did. I mean, the second last, he was very long, and he, he came for me, you know, and good horses do that for you, and... I mean, it's to go to Cheltenham, second beating a short head in the Queen Mother, on to Aintree, win an Aintree and come here and win. You know, it's it's not easy for us to do that. And he's just a very tough, good horse. It's only a week yesterday since I was jumping up and down after you coming in on our Duke of the Irish National, which is so wonderful. And then, of course, tomorrow we've got the Gold Cup again now with Sizing John. And he's in good form. Yeah, no, he's in great form. I mean, Kate rides him out every day and she's very... So you're not allowed near him, are you? I'm not allowed anywhere near him, no, I'm not. He actually booked her off yesterday morning coming back in after a canter, so... She's going to love you for saying that. <laughs> he's, a, he's in very good form, so, uh, you know, you don't know until you go back to the track with them chasers, how they've come out with their the hard race yet in Cheltenham but he's given all the right signs at home and hopefully they love the ground so fingers crossed your father Con's here and I tell you what he's a very very proud man long may it continue well done cheers thanks well done Robert Oh yes, more magnificent stuff from Robbie Power and a magic display from Fox Norton uh, to take our feature this evening, the Ball Sports Champion Steeplechase of €250,000. Brilliant display from him, adding to his victory uh, at Aintree just a couple of weeks ago, 5-2, to two, the odds of reward about your winner, Fox Norton. Second number eight, under so, eventually dispatched the 10-11 to 11 favourite and third was number three, last year's winner, God's Own, another great display from him here at Punchestown, sent off at 7-1. to one. All eight ran and looking ahead 605 it's the Land Rover bumper for which your early favorite is number four early doors 13 to 8 
Oh, so exciting, isn't it? So lovely. Those two mile chasers, you they just take your breath away, don't they? And so, well, he, he met his match today, uh, maybe on ground that wasn't quite his liking, but take nothing away from the winner, Fox Norton. Well done to Colin Tizard. Well done to the, the Potsies for buying him. And well done to Puppy as well. Fantastic race. We've got a break to take. Lots more coming up.